pretty data oriented this code. I like it. So first you parse all cards, then you have all cards in place, and then you work on these cards. My solution was more stream oriented. Good morning. Here are the guys from Germany. I'm Thomas, and today I have Frank here. Good morning, Frank. Hello, Thomas. And I got Achim here, and Achim will explain his solution in Java. Hello, Achim. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, world. Hi. Achim, can you first explain the riddle for us in short words? Uh, the riddle is we encounter another elf that uh, has a bunch of scratch cards. And uh, these cards essentially look like this. They have an index number. They have some wi declared winning numbers and they have an a number of a uh, group of numbers that we have for ourselves. This is more or less like bingo, where this is the numbers that we have, and these are the numbers that all all others get. And if you have them um, all, you could cry bingo or something like that. However, in this case, we have uh, these numbers on a card, and for each card, we have to determine how many matches do we have from the left side to the right side? This sounds easy. That sounds easy. And then we have to ca calculate a score depending on the number of hits. So if we have one hit, we get one point. For any further hit, the uh, score doubles for that card. And then we have to sum up the score for all cards. So I go to the code for part one. <coughs> um, as as uh, yesterday, I also uh, used the test the sample data from the story itself as a test. Helped me very much to to find any bug, and then. I take the input and have to parse it. So I read it line by line. I, th I have put in a filter because the uh, real data ends with a empty line that I don't really need. And for, um, from each line, I, generated, I generate one card. I have a class here. The parser is more or less in its constructor. So I look for the colon, I look for the pipe character and use them to split the string up. I pass the index. Actually, I don't really need that, but I did it any anyhow. Then I take the left side, create the substring, split it by space, Filter it for for any string that is in the that is the empty string. This was and, my uh, fault. <laughs> yeah, nice. And uh, from the remaining elements, I parse integers and create a list. And you can directly work with integers. Yes, the numbers are not that big today. And uh, for the right side, I do essentially the same. I just have un. Uh, I just have other indices, so this is uh, one, uh, one, uh, one from the colon, and that is the pipe. And this is uh, from the pipe one step further to the right, to the very end of the string. So I have these two sides. Yep. Straightforward. And then what do you do? With then I need to right? calculate the number of hits. But I have to admit the hits method uh, is, uh, is, is, as it stands here, is more or less part of the solutions for the second part. Um, so I take the list uh, from the left, put it into a set, and then I use the retain all operation which um, 
for which I can use two. Um, I have two collections, and only those elements that are part of both collections will then be uh, remain as part of this collection. So I can then return the size of this collection. Then this means the size is equal to the to the to the hits. Exactly. Five hits. Okay. Yeah. Nice. For the score cal calculation, I use the number of hits. If it is zero, I return zero. If it is more than zero, I get a little bit tricky because if you get one hit, you have one point. If you get two hits, you get two points. If you get three hits, you get four points. So I take the number of hits minus one to the power of two. I could have used the math power method, uh, but I just used uh, shifting. So if I shift the one, one to the uh, one to the left, I get a two. If I get I shifted zero to a left, then I still have the one. Yeah. So this is a shift operator for our followers, which are learning Java in this moment. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You don't Frank, need do you... it oh, that often, but uh, it's quite handy if you just need uh, powers from two. Yeah. Frank, do you got a question to this first solution? Oh, no, looks nice to me. Yeah. Good. Then let's jump to the second part. Yes, the second part. As always, we have we have a twist. There's no such thing as points. In fact, on the back side of the scratch cards has are the real rules for the game. For every car for, for every matching number, you get a copy of a following card. In fact, going by the example, the uh, the card one has four numbers that match from this side to this side. So you yeah. get copies of cards two, three, and four, and five. The, the cop, uh, so the cop, copies for the four following cards. Okay. So you have these double. Then you would evaluate card two. which has, by the example, uh, two matching numbers. So you get a copy for card three and four each, but you have, you have, you have this twice now. So you get two copies additional for these, summing it up to four. This means I got card three four times? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. So. If you would copy, if you would create actual copies of each card, of each card, you would create uh, a lot of objects. And uh, I decided to do something different. I just added this field, initializing it with one, because initially I have one copy. And when I evaluate through the cards, again, here the card parsing. So I iterate through the cards, starting with card one, get the number of copies it has, it's one, get the number of hits this card provides, that is my, that is my F. Let me guess. In the hits method, you need the copies field. Exactly. Oh. Uh, no, not really. The the hits method doesn't use it. It just tells me how many copies I have, how many hits I have. Um, the the number of copies come into place here. So I loop through the following cards, but so from i plus one to i plus f plus one. F is are the hits. Okay, if 
F is hits. The F is are the are the hits. But I have to be aware that I might run out of indi uh, out of indices in, in my cards list. So I limit the running variable for this loop by by the number of cards. Okay. So if I only have six cards and I try to access a seventh card, uh, the minimum function shall prevent that. And then, uh, so running through the following cards, I tag their copy value and increment it by the number of copies that I have of the card I'm, actu I'm actually evaluating. Okay, I, I think I got it. Also, what what uh, what is the sum? Also, what do you have to summarize in this riddle? I think you didn't talk about. In the end, you have to summarize how many cards you have. Okay. I do it here. That's yeah. So I go through all my cards, take then uh, take the number of copies. And sum them up. Yeah, I got it. Frank, question from you to this code? No, it's a, a pretty data oriented this code. I like it. So first you parse all cards, then you have all cards in place, and then you work on these cards. My solution was more stream oriented. So while parsing, I add up the numbers and don't store any anything. But uh yeah, well, this way it looks more organized. Yeah. If you interested in the solution of Frank, you can click here to come directly to the solution of Frank. Okay. Nice. Some other words, Achim, Frank, to this? See you tomorrow. Yeah, then. Big thank you to you both. We see us tomorrow. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.